don't think so. What don't you think so? I just think we should uh, set um, appropriate goals. Aha, uh -huh, set appropriate goals. Okay, hello and welcome to another video by Johnny Ailes. Today is the last, probably last lesson of Mr. Moon and he will have to take his exam on this Sunday, right? This Saturday, right? Yes. Okay, so on the 22nd. All right. So last lesson, let's do the best you could possibly get. Okay. All right. So, uh, Mr. Moon, let's go to topic part one and then um, say, okay, we did this one. Oh, let's, let's go to the car trip. So do you like to travel by car? Yes, absolutely. You know, travel by car, it helped me to feel comfortable and relaxed, you know. Like uh, sitting in a car, it uh, gives me a sense of privacy. And also, it, it's more secure for me, you know. Like a uh, car is one of the most, um, one of the most safe. The safest, one uh, of the safest. One of, one of the safest uh, means of traveling, means of uh, transportation on the road right now. Okay, if you say so, how often do you travel by car? <clears throat> hmm, my family don't have a car, and I normally I just travel by electric bike. So, travel by car, it just happened to me about once a month, you know. Like on some occasion, I can uh, go with my brother, or when I travel to somewhere, I would use a good car. Okay, do you like to sit in the front or back when traveling by car? Hmm, personally, I, I love sitting in the front more, you know, like I can watch the road coming, I can watch the, the route I'm going, and then, uh, you know, I love the initiative, initiation. What? The initiative. I'm a initiative person, so... What do you mean, uh, initiative person? So, a person like, who t often take initiative, right? Một người thường là yeah. um, chủ động làm gì đó. Like, an active person yeah. or a person who often take initiative, I see. Oh. I, I, I'm a person, I'm a person who uh, love to take initiative, so I like to sit in the front to seeing uh, the road we are traveling and then you know sitting sitting in the back i just want to sleep because uh, there's nothing to see there's nothing to do um apart from just uh using my my smartphone and then take something watch something until i sleep so i just love sitting in the front more uh -huh. Chủ động làm gì đó, to take initiative, on your own initiative. Okay, so to take the initiative means uh, a power, opportunity to win an advantage. Cái quyền lực hoặc cái khả năng mà thắng được một cái lợi ích nào đó, một cái lợi ích nào đó. Advantage. So to take initiative means like um, to seize the initiative. Lấy, cái, chủ, lấy quyền chủ động, chiếm quyền chủ động. Lose the initiative means like the the other way around. Okay. Okay. So, do you think sitting in a back of a car is a safer option? Nó đâu có bị đụng xe gì đó thì ngồi đằng sau dễ khó chết hơn chứ? Well, yes, definitely. You know, sitting in the back, we have uh, the we have the person who uh, sit in the front can. He can be a barrier, and he's also a shield, a shield uh, for us. Okay. And so, uh, even the driver, you know, when if uh, if our car hit somebody, hit somebody or hit another car, the people who sit in the front would suffer first. So, after they suffer, it would be us. So. I think uh, sitting in the back is uh, pretty much safer than sitting in the front. Uh -huh. 
Right. So where's the longest journey you have traveled by car? Hmm. Making down a trip through, making a trip through down the memory line. I have uh, made the longest trip is that uh, the trip from my hometown to Vung Tau City. You know, is a uh, a travel from the north of Vietnam to the south, and then it it took me about a day and a half, and it was quite a, an interesting interesting journey. Interesting journey, and then you know I can watch the thing around because uh, the route is uh, beside the sea, is the seaside seaside route. So it's really it's really fast, and I can watch the sea. I can watch the residents the houses uh, around around me, and then you know it's quite interesting. Interesting. I can interesting. Interesting. It, it was was quite interesting. It helps to broaden my perspective. Bro Pers broaden my, my perspective. 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 And so, and I can also try different different specialties along the way. You know, uh, at the at the at the stop or maybe at uh, the meal like a uh, breakfast or lunch or dinner. The car often stop, and we can uh, get out, get off the car, and then go away to uh, seek for some food, or they have prepared a meal for us. So I have, I have the chance, I had the chance to try different cuisines of different princip, uh, of different province. So that's quite exciting. Interesting that you provide me such a long answer, and this is a, just a car trip, you know. <laughs> yeah. But I only ask you about sitting in the back of a car. Is it a safer option? And then I think you go all the way until into describing your trip and then where you went to and everything. I think it's a bit too far fetched, don't you think? No, you uh you, it's a bit you far asked fetched, the... don't you think? But uh, I I heard you ask the last question. Nó hơi bị đi quá xa, maybe. Okay, so where's yeah, the longest journey? Okay, I asked you where the longest journey. Okay, sorry. You have travel yeah. by car. Okay, got it. So do you prefer to travel by car or by motorbike? Why? Why not? Hmm. Different uh, different methods uh, have different advantages, but I think when we travel. A long distance, uh, traveling by car is better than motorbike. But when it comes to uh, the journey that is often less uh, shorter, I think motorbike is uh, a better option. But uh, when traveling by car, we have the advantages that it is safer and it also faster than by motorbike. And then when it comes to motorbike. You know, it's a per, it's a private, uh, it's a private uh, trans means of transportation. And when we traveling on the road of some cities in Vietnam, uh -huh. there are always there are often, you know, there are usually traffic congestions on the road. So, uh, tra by, by traveling on a motorbike, we can, uh, we can uh, travel through the line to through the lines of uh, cars moving uh ex moving uh shortly each each time so motorbike has a big advantages that it can travel on the pavement and hey that is against so that the law be, you know yeah it's but, against um, the law to travel on the pavement remember that yeah it's uh, it's against the law but um people nowadays are still doing it you know Okay, of course it's more nobody... convenient. But if the if the police catch you, catches you, you will be fined for some money, you know. Money. Yeah, but no, normally people would know where where the police uh, are standing, <laughs> you know. That's why the police they often hide, play hide and seek, you know. Yeah. Okay, now let's go to environmental protection. 
Will you do anything to protect the environment? Hmm. Well, I will think so. But uh, if I have the chance to protect the environment, I would definitely do. But if I have to do everything to protect, I don't think so. It can make me become a conservative person, you know, like become a coward. So <laughs> if I well, risk anything, risk everything to protect the environment, I can become a protester. And protester, not only uh, just uh, huh? yeah, someone who protests only, a lot, you mean? Yeah. So if if I uh, just go around and uh, you know speak about the environment, I can be a you know it it can poison my image in other people's eyes. So uh -huh. I would not do anything, but I do would do something to protect the environment. Okay. Will you do anything in the future to protect the environment? Mm, yes, of course. You know, um, the environment is uh, the place we live, so we have to we have the responsibility to protect it. And yes, absolutely, I would tr try to join some volunteer group in the future to, um, for example. Mm, uh, cleaning the rivers in my hometown or uh, join some group like Saigon Sang or Hanoi Sang to, um, you which know, are, which try are to... Which are groups for environmental protection, right? You need to explain, yeah. you know, explain. Yeah, so uh, those are volunteer groups that help to, um, that help to eliminate water pollution in different uh, location of the city so it would be a, an interesting interesting in experience for me to experience interesting experience yeah it would be an interesting experience for me to join those groups and yes in the future I would absolutely try to uh, join them okay good <clears throat> So, did you learn about environmental protection at school? Mm, yes. Uh, we, learned, we learned about it, about it so much. And it appeared in every English, uh, every English book at school, you know. There, in any grade, there will always be um, some unit or some uh, exercises about um, environmental protection and so they carved in my mind about uh, environmental protection and so you know I, I have quite some uh, knowledge about protecting the environment okay right I see would you like to work in a company related to environmental protection mm, yes absolutely um, not only just a, a company related to environmental protection i think in right now there are many com companies that uh, have some you know have some program like um all employees should spend two two weeks or one weeks or about or, or on some occasion uh, they would uh, take the employees out for you know, cleaning the rubbish around the park. And those are some activities that help to uh, protect the environment. And I think Just all that. company... I think I yeah. think working for a company related to environmental protections, you have to do much more than that. Like you need to yeah. join like in these kind of environmental protection campaigns and do something bigger such as dealing with uh, dumpsters, dealing with um, finding uh, better methods to clean water or something like that you know it has mm. to be something bigger than just like joining volunteer activities you know it's much more than that mm. okay okay let's do flowers then so what kinds of flowers do you like remember sometimes well, you have to be asked like very weird question like this and topics uh, that are normally 
not something that you're interested in. So what yes. kinds of flower do you like? Well, I love sunflowers the best. You know, uh, my name is Ben Min, and uh, it is the, the dawn, the sunrise. So basically, basically my, my name means uh, the sun. So I love sunflowers. I was a lot because uh, and it also always, um, you are Leo, so yeah, you like so... something that bright and inviting, and then very flashy, you know. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I love sunflower because it's always to look uh, to the sun, and I have um, you know used this uh, the name of this uh, flower to uh, you know is I use uh, it as a name for my girlfriend. Oh, your girlfriend named who you? No, no, I just uh, name her. You know, a special name. I see. So, have you planted any flowers? Hmm. No, I haven't planted. Um. Normally, I just buy the flowers uh, around the shops in my hometown, and. I just, you know, I just haven't had the chance. Uh, uh, although my family uh, sells a lot of plants dec- that use for decoration, you know, but um, we don't sell flowers. So I have never seen, had the chance to plant some flowers. Uh-huh. So what do you think about herbs? So this one can be pronounced like herbs. Or herbs, okay. It depends up. Uh, it depends on you. Bạn nghĩ gì về uh, hương liệu, cây cỏ, like herbs? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, what, yeah. Uh, is there any use for them? Medicinal use or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think they have a lot of use. Use. For example, they can be used for cooking, or they can be used for medical uh, purposes, like um, creating creating medicines for example and in in west in eastern uh, med medication uh, there are many uh, methods that use uh, herbs and it, it, it is quite uh, you know effective and so I think herbs is um, something that has a lot of use in our in our life nowadays okay. Right. Uh, have you ever sent flowers to anyone? Yes, absolutely. I have sent flowers to the girls in my class. And I also have uh, sent flowers to my mom every year, you know, uh, about twice a year. And flowers is, a, you know, a useful kind of gifts. Uh, as I don't have to think about any special thing, just flowers to give to the girls on some special occasion. And mm-hmm. normally, they, it would fascinate the girls so much. So um, it's a common gift, you know, it, mm-hmm. it is so useful. I see. <clears throat> right. So add any flowers that have special meanings in your country. This is a big one. Okay. You need to think about maybe lotus, you know. Hoa lotus, hoa sheng. We have the uh, chair, uh, what's it called? The yellow flower. Cái hoa vàng vàng, hoa mai. Uh, daisy. Uh, no, it's not daisy. Daisy là hoa cúc dại. Oh. I think um, it has a very long name. Hoa mai in English. I think it's... Um, Oh, it what? Comes to... The yellow my flower, my vang. No, it's not. It's a. Uh, it's have a name. Yeah. There's a name. Uh, I have There's learned... a name for it. Yellow apricot flower. The apricot, apricot. Yellow apricot flower. Tại vì nó liên quan đến cái trái đào. Cái đào trái mai. What? Yellow apricot flower. But don't confuse it with cherry blossom. Okay. Cherry blossom. We call them sakura. Sakura. Yeah. Cherry blossom is basically the sakura plant. And uh, wait, is it the same thing? No, no it's sakura. Not. Yes, sakura. And it's uh, 
The National Obsession nó là một cái sự mà giống như là cuồng của cả đất nước đó luôn. Yeah, well, but, uh, in the yes. blossom in Vietnam is not the sakura, you know. Uh, in Japan they call in Japan is the uh, hoa anh đào, but in Vietnam it's just hoa đào. Interesting. Is it the same thing? Don't you think? No, it's not. You know, the flowers are different. Okay. All right. Answer the question, please. Are any flowers that have special meanings in your country? Well, yes, but um, I don't think I can remember of any kinds. Um, well, for example, the uh, lotus. You know, it is the national lo uh, the national lotus um, image of a flower in in my country. And it represents the pureness, you know, and it also links with the image of a girl who image, were the outside. Image of a girl. Huh? Yeah, and it is also linked with the image of a girl who were outside, uh, you know, the national costume of Vietnam. And then, so it it is quite a symbol of Vietnam of Vietnamese people. And it is also uh, has a close relationship with um, Buddhism, you know. With what? You know, so Buddhism. Buddhism, right? Buddhism, yeah. Buddhism. Buddhism so, is Buddhism. Buddhism. So it's a symbol of purity, yes, and closely yeah. linked to yeah. Buddhism, yes. So it has a, a lot of um, meaning in in lotus. And There's a lot when of it comes in, to in the flower lotus, yeah, you know, flower lotus. So okay. when it comes to another uh, flowers, I don't think I can, I know the exact meaning of them, but uh, I but can mention too, some right? kind. Yeah, but uh, I can mention some kinds of flower like uh, rose or daisy or you know um, uh, the apricot blossom. Okay, I understand now. Okay, uh, let's move on to part two. Okay, someone used 26 already are here. Let's move on to part two now. Let's try 77. Describe an activity you usually do that wastes your time. Miêu tả một hoạt động bạn thường làm mà nó tốn thời gian các bạn. You should say what it is, when you usually do it, why you do it. Explain why you think it wastes your time. Tại sao bạn lại nghĩ nó tốn thời gian của bạn? And part 3 about wasting time. And then um, I think part 3 is about spending time actually. 3. How do people balance life and work? Con người ta cân bằng giữa công việc cuộc sống như thế nào? Will you continue doing something when you are aware that it's a waste of time? Khi bạn biết được rõ ràng một cái việc đó là một việc phí thạm phạm thời gian thì bạn sẽ tiếp tục làm cái gì đó chứ? Yes, absolutely. Number, okay, and what kinds of things make people feel pressured? Có những thứ gì làm cho người ta cảm thấy bị áp lực? IELTS exam. <cười> of course, exams always make people feel pressured. And why do yes. some people refuse to abide by the rules? You know the word abide by the rules, right? No. To abide by the rules means like you follow it. To follow the rules. But there's a different me there's a different word that say obey the rules. Obey the oh. rules means like you follow the rules without question. Mình tuân theo luật mà không hỏi hang gì hết Tức là sao một, một cách mù quáng á. So blindly follow the rules I mean you blindly follow the rules Without questioning why you have to do that And you know sometimes rules can be broken You know Sometimes yeah. rules are, are bad And it need to be abolished Một số cái luật đôi khi nó tệ Nó phải bị bãi bỏ nha So why do some people refuse to abide by the rules? Tại sao một số người họ lại từ chối tuân theo luật? Tuân theo luật lệ. Okay, you have some time to think now. 
All right, please describe an activity you usually do that wastes your time, please. Yes. Well, I'm going to talk about you know, surfing TikTok, you know. I really feel like I can do social media. Okay, okay, it's you're not being clear. Có gì đó, nghe không rõ. Okay, try again. Well, I'm going to talk about okay. surfing TikTok. Good now, good now. Okay, let me start again. So, I will talk about surfing TikTok. Um, you know, a really famous uh, social media site right now. And I do it, you know, I, I can up. It's kind of every day. And every time I have uh, free time, I would turn on the, uh, my turn on the phone and check the messenger whether someone texts me. And then I surf to Facebook for a while to check whether there's you know, some breaking news for me or, you know, or not. And after that, I would spend the whole time, the whole time, the whole time rest to surf the TikTok. And, to surf you know, TikTok. TikTok. Da, TikTok, to surf da, TikTok. Facebook, da, YouTube. Yeah. To, surf, uh, uh, to surf on TikTok, okay. To surf on TikTok. And, you know, TikTok is a platform of uh, short videos, although they are short videos, but they have uh, a lot of information and it was quite, it is quite fascinating. And the feed you know, is often consist, consists of, often consists of uh, videos that uh, suit the hobby of the user. And TikTok uh, have, you know, billions of uh, short videos that uh, suit the user's need. And then, you know, you know, watch these short videos. But uh, if we, if we uh, watch uh, ex excessively, um, it would uh, uh, short plus, short plus plus, short plus uh, short, it would become long. So, I think watching TikTok is even more time consuming than um, watching YouTube. And so I'm, you know, I was absorbed in it and I cannot get out when, uh, in, until I run out of uh, free time and I have to go back to work. But, but, uh, if I do, uh, I don't you know, watch TikTok, I can spend this time on doing something that is more, uh, that is more effective and, um, you know, it can bring a lot of quality like um, learning a new skills or find find out something about other things like uh, cooking or maybe uh, other aspect of study. So I think watching TikTok is a really time consuming. It's a very and, time consuming thing. And so, do you actually learn anything from that? What's your final question? Yes, and it also wastes my time so much because, uh, oh, you know, I'm I can spend hours. That. I can waste hours of time. So I will, and but I think I would do it in the in the future because uh, it helped me to entertain a lot. Uh -huh. Entertaining, but the problem is, it destroy your ability to focus on other more important tasks. You know. So mm. I do think TikTok is actually quite toxic for people. Tại vì nó làm yeah. hủy hoại cái khả năng tập trung với những cái tác vụ khác nha. Yes. Just like the same way mm -hmm. as um, you know, too much me social media, but I do think that TikTok is even more dangerous than other kind of social media. Người ta yeah, vẫn chưa well. biết được cái tác cái tác dụng tác động lâu dài của social media đâu nha. We don't know the long-term effect of social media yet because people are exposed to it only, you know, in the last 10 years or maybe 15 years. Mm. So yeah, far, uh, social media has done a lot, but there is a long-term effect of that. We never know. Could be very bad. Yeah, but, but uh, many times I gain social information or social knowledge uh, from social media sites. Mm -hmm. So I still think that there's good and bad in that. Yeah. Okay. So it just uh, if we use excessively it would be bad. Uh, 
So what kinds of things make people feel pressured? Hmm. I think there are many times and kinds of things. For example, uh, taking taking an examination, it would be really stressful. And also, if we take part in some competi competition, competition, it would be competition. It, it, it is also so stressful and it's also it makes us feel, to feel the tense, you know, competing against other opponents. And then when it comes to feel pressured, I think maybe men in every time, men in our lives, they face a lot of pressure. For example, okay. you know, the, uh, fam the family pressure or the social social expectation and so men are always under the pressure to you know become rich so i think there are many kinds of things that uh, pressure pressurize men and no pressurize pressurize you cannot mm -hmm. use the word pressurize in this case there's a lot of things that Put pressure on men. Yeah. That put pressure on men. Yep. Pressurize giống như là em uh, làm cho một cái bình xịt á, nó bị ép áp lực lên mà có thật nha, chứ không phải là áp lực theo okay. tâm lý đâu nha. Okay. Okay. So to put pressure on men. Okay. So, so um, how do people balance life and work then? What do you think? What's your your um, suggestion? Well. I haven't I haven't worked because I'm a, still a student. Uh -huh. But if I if I consider study as a work, I think that it's a special kind of work should, uh, actually. Yeah. So I think if we have to con to balance, it would be um, controlling the time. You know, for example, if we in a separate if we divide a day into three parts, uh, eight hours for sleeping and eight hours for uh, life and eight hours for study, it would be really su suffi sufficient and it's um, effective, you know? Like uh, we don't have to study so much because uh, uh, many young youngsters nowadays, they spend hours even, you know, mm, even uh, half a day to study and they already have time for entertainment. Uh -huh. entertaining and also sleeping because uh, nowadays people and uh, youngsters they just sleep about uh, five or six hours per night and that's kind of gonna read that's gonna ruin their going health to. so much and that's going to ruin ruin their health so much and so that they should balance the time to spend on each thing yes Right, so will you continue doing something when you are aware that there's a waste of time? Uh, yes, I, uh, exactly. Um, you know, if these things were not waste my time, I think I would stop doing it now, right at that time. But if it's uh, a kind of entertainment, I cannot tell whether I was absorbed in it or not. So if I was absorbed in I think I cannot get out until I run out of free time or somebody take me or give me some task uh, and then I, I, would, uh, I can escape from it. But, um, you know, things that waste my time, if I am aware of it, that it, that is not just, not only just uh, uh, make, put me under pressure, but also it waste my time like uh, I have to do something for other people or without getting something back or if I have to wait wait for somebody to uh, go with me to the school it would be really waste my time wasting time consuming and I cannot gain anything back so I think I would not do uh, anything if I anything that wastes my time if I am aware of it. Uh -huh. Okay, so why do some people refuse to abide by the rules then? Hmm. In my experience, I think just because uh, they 
don't have money to pay for the fines, you know, like for example, if we if people um, break the law to tra travel on the road, I think normally they just uh, call somebody in the government to help them, or maybe they just um, have to pay a fine. But uh, normally, you, you know, not wearing a not wearing a helmet or traveling um, past the past the speed uh, limit, it mm -hmm. would be you know people consider them as a uh, minor minor as minor you know as um, minor falls. Uh -huh. So they would not uh, stand and you know uh, pay the fine, but. Um, just because they think that it is a small problem and they don't want to solve it. So normally they just abide by rules and have an argument abide with by the, the police. Rules. Abide by the rules and they would have a, um, an argument with the, the, with the police. Police, you know what yeah. The police. You don't want to end up in prison or end up in uh, being beaten up, you know. Yeah. All right. So that is seventy-seven. Let's do seventy-six. Describe a time when you felt proud of a family member. Miêu tả một thời điểm mà bạn cảm thấy tự hào về một cái thành viên gia đình mình. You should say when it happened, who the person is, what the person did, explain why you felt proud of him or her. As a Leo, I'm sure you felt proud a lot. And then part three, when would parents feel proud of their children? Khi nào cha, cha mẹ, các bậc cha mẹ sẽ cảm thấy tự hào về cho con, con của họ? Should parents reward children? Why and how? Các bậc cha mẹ có nên thưởng cho trẻ con họ, cho trẻ nhỏ của họ không? Tại sao và như thế nào mới thưởng được? Thưởng như thế nào? Is it good to reward children too often? Why? Thưởng cho trẻ nhỏ quá thường xuyên có phản tác dụng không? Is there any... Um, does it backfire if you reward children too often? Like, don't feed into the ego of children too much, you know? To feed ego. the ego... Nuôi cái tôi... Nuôi cái tôi nó lớn quá là không được nha. To feed the ego of people is not a good thing. <cười> if you feed the ego of other people too much they will end up being very selfish individuals you know that is bad mm. you should never do that yeah. mm. is it good to reward children too often and why is on what occasion would adults be proud of themselves trong cái dịp nào những người lớn sẽ um, tự hào về bản thân họ okay you think about this one describe a time when you felt proud of a family member please Hello, your microphone's on, please. Yes, hello, hello. Okay, start. Yes, I'm going to talk about uh, the, the time that I feel I felt really proud. That is um, my mother's achievement of being able to swim. Um, last, it was the last two weeks that uh, my mom, my mother took uh, a course at the swimming pool and, you know, in the previous times, whenever my family had a chance to uh, go to the beach, um, she just played in. She just played in the shallow water, and if you, if she wanted to uh, go far away from the shore, she had to use a um, swimming, a uh, swimming uh, suit. You know, swimming suit, not just suit. It's just a, a swim, You know, it's a. It's, Yes. Yeah, what do you want to say now? Yeah, well, uh, she had to use a swimming suit. Yes, so that's it. Yes, swimming suit, what? Yeah, I'm going to say 
um, inflating, I, uh, what was it called? Life jacket. It's basically uh, yes. the one that you wear when you swim, yes. life jacket. And also, okay. um, what is the inflating things that you use? Okay, foul. Yeah. You can always check. Float. The float. Life jacket. Float? Uh, life jacket is basically, oh, foul. The swimming boil or life belt. The float. Okay. Interesting. This first time I noticed a float. Yeah, it's first time for me too. Because I never need one, so. No, okay, so. What else do you want to say oh. about this one now? Okay. Well, whenever she had me, she, want to, she wanted to drop to go far away from the shore, she had to use a float or a swim. A life jacket, and now with uh, uh, with a course uh, lasting one week, she uh, she spent one week uh, in, uh, training, and then swimming become her second nature. She can second swim pretty nature. well. Yeah, she, she can swim. she can swim pretty well nowadays. Uh, I she recorded a video, and you know she can. Uh, swim across the swimming pool, and I felt really proud. Of, proud, uh, you know, like um, this is um, one of the biggest achievement in her life, in her nearly fifty years life and fifty years long life. So, um, it was uh, interesting, interesting. Um, in the future, if my family have the chance to uh, travel to somewhere to some beaches uh, she can uh, go far away and far away from the shore and play with uh, my father and my and myself so it would be so exciting that um, all the family members can swim and uh, we don't we won't have to be worried if uh, one of the members uh, one will is not uh, be able to uh, swim so uh, it would be really entertaining whenever my family had a chance to uh, to uh, go on a vacation. So yes, I proud of her so much because um, she's only the only uh, woman in my my family, and she's also um, being able to swim. So that's great, you know. Okay, very well. When would parents feel proud of their children then? Hmm. I think um, hmm, they would be really proud if their children have some achievement. For example, um, but they, their children pass the exams with flying colors, or they or they they uh, ace all the finals, for example. And then get the stellar result, or the maybe just uh, uh, their children have learned some skills, for example, swimming skill or cooking skill, for example. And then if their children, for example, play Lego and uh, build a whole kingdom, and they show their parents that they are they have a great creativity or imagination. Their parents would be really proud, you know. Okay. And also, when their children have the chance to help each other, and they help successfully, I think their parents would be really proud that um, their their children have a love for humans. So, yeah. So those are the times that I think parents would be really proud. Okay. So should parents reward children? Why and how? Yes. Um, <coughs> yes, absolutely. Um, having a reward can having a reward can be a driving force behind the, the children's effort to complete the task. And you know, uh, in in our modern life, if we if we are uh, assigned a duty uh, to on. Assign a task for the children 
if we don't have anything to give them like a candy or uh, a cake or something like uh, that um they would be you, you know low motivated and they would do this task with uh, uh with bad moods so you know it's like uh, they are forced to do this so they're not happy and the the productivity would be so low so i think uh, if we reward them something it can be a strong motivation uh, so they would uh, have the best effort to try to complete the task successfully and then get the result and also get the reward they have so i think uh, rewarding is a really highly recommended activity mm -hmm. i see so is it good to reward children too often why mm -hmm. absolutely no um you know we have to make the reward become uh, something that is rare you know so that uh, the children the ch children would uh, not consider rewards as something don't take normal, it for granted you know? right yeah they would not they would not take it for granted you know if we reward them too often it would be you know they would feel like reward are so common uh, and then they would take them for granted then to take it for granted and, uh, Xem như chuyện đương nhiên yes. có không thể quý trọng. That's for granted. Yes. And then uh, yeah. having a re yes. And then having a reward or not does not bother them. That's not what. Does not bother them, and it also not uh, motivate them anymore. It's so, not motivating to them in any way, right? It doesn't hold up. It doesn't yeah. motivate them in any way. In uh, yeah. In and it, it doesn't motivate them in any way. So I think we just um, we, sh we should just uh, reward them rarely, so that the uh, uh, reward becomes something that is uh, uncommon, and then they would uh, try to complete the task and then get the rare result, get the rare uh, reward. So I think we sh should not reward them so often. I see. So. On what occasions would adults be proud of themselves? So you know, sometimes adults when they achieve something, of course they they celebrate, you know, and they are proud of themselves a lot. Yes, well, in my experience, adults are um, adults re rarely celebrate something, but um, so I think uh, whenever they. Uh, have some achievement, for example, they win a comp competition, or they have uh, done some great deals, or they have win a lottery, a lottery, for example, and also they would be feel they would feel proud of themselves when they, uh, you know, they do their job successfully, you know, like. Um, they have worked. They have worked hard the whole year, and at the end of the year, they get some reward, and that would uh, make them so proud. Like uh, they stand out in, they stand out uh, in a group of thousands of uh, employees, and then they are one of the best employees, one of the most um, hardworking uh, uh, pe person in people in that in that group. So they would be really proud. So I think those are occasions that they could celebrate a lot. Okay, good now. All right, this is 76. Let's move on to the next one. 78. Describe an item on which you spend more than expected. Một vật dụng mà bạn phải dành mà bạn đã chi tiền nhiều hơn bạn mong chờ, mong đợi. You should say what it is, how much you spend on it, and why you bought it. Explain why oh. you think you spend more than expected. And then part three, I'm sure this one is about spending. Do you often buy more than you expect? It? What do you think young people spend most of their time, their money on? Người trẻ, họ dành phần đông cái tiền của họ lên cái thứ gì? How about old people, người già thì sao? 
Do you think it is important to save money and why? Cái chuyện tiết kiệm tiền quan trọng không? Tại sao? Do people usually buy things they don't need? Con người ta có thường mua những thứ họ không cần không? Yeah. Okay, this is... Describe an item on which you spend more than expected. Okay. Well, um, I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, my football boots. Well, at first, I just uh, imagined that I would uh, pay a maximum of uh, $500,000 Vietnam dong for a pair of boots. But um, it, uh, when it comes to the boots I'm wearing now, it was up to nearly $700,000 Vietnam dong. And, you know, it's a high quality boot. It's a pair of boots. So I had to more, to spend more than expected. But after, after three days, uh, three days uh, trying it, I, I think it's worth my money. You know, it's a high quality boot. Uh, it can be uh, used to play in uh, rainy, uh, rainy weather, or it can also, uh, played in uh, sunny weather is you know it's versatile and it's some in some way it looks fashionable or fashionable and you know this uh, the productivity of this boots is uh, excellent mm, i mean in the in the medium of uh, under one one million vietnam dong it's the best of all and um it helps it helps me to uh try different skills in football skills it helped it also helped me to uh, uh speed up faster to accelerate really quick and also uh, although it do not help me to uh um upgrade or boost my uh, speed but all it but it uh, helped me to uh reduce the force that i uh suffer from the from the football pitch back so it's quite useful, you know, it helped me to um, resist uh, a lot of injuries. And then... A lot of what? Resist a lot of what? A lot of injur injuries. 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 And and so, I love it so much. And I have, um, you know, I have fascinated, fascinated my, my friends about them. And then they was like, um... Oh, you're so rich, but I think not. It's not about money. It's about uh, the quality of the boot of the boots. So um, I tried to persuade it to persuade them to buy it, but I do not have the do not have enough money. So you know, I would uh, try to spend more time on more on more high quality boots in the future, just for you know the experience. Uh -huh. I see. Right, okay, so do you often buy more than you expected? Hmm, well, I don't think so. Normally, I just uh, set out some a list. Uh, to, I just make a list on what I need to buy. And then I just go and buy them. So it's, there's nothing that uh, go out of my expectation. And... Uh, I, you know, I, I, I went, I go shopping really rarely, so normally I just uh, don't go outside and buy something. I just uh, sit at home and uh, go on and surf on some, uh, buy some shopping on, on like online shopping site, and you know, the price is the. Uh, the price is on that, so I I can manage the money, and so I you know I haven't spent more than I expected. I already spent more than I expected, and yes. Okay, so what do you think young people spend most of their money on, and how about older people? Well, I think. When it comes to young people, they love to squander their money on things like um, games or, you know, boots or clothes. 
they have a lot, but、mm, they just wear it about a couple of times, and they consider those clothes are,、uh, you know, old、um, old things. So they love to buy new ones to follow the trend, you know. And also, when it comes to the old people, I think they they use their money a lot for buying medicine, for hospital, for healthcare. Or and they also, you know, they save money for they save money for the next generation. So I cannot、uh, think of anything that they waste their money on. But I do think that、uh, old people they they、uh, can be they can be cheated. They can be cheated really easily. So. Many times they can be. Oh,、know. trust me, older people they got cheated as well. It's not they are not immune to being cheated, you know. Đâu có miễn nhiễm khỏi chuyện bị bị người ta lừa đâu. They're not yeah, immune、so、to being cheated. Be, yeah, human, you know. They are cheated a lot. Yeah, they are cheated a lot about、uh, buying the wrong medicine that they consider the the medicine that can help them live for a hundred a hundred years old. So I think those are those those are the things that. Yeah, make them squander their squander their money on them so much. I see. Now, do you think it's important to save money? Why? You know, a lot of people they just earn and then they just spend the last dime on anything shiny and new. You know, they don't even think、yeah. about saving money. That's how people are. So a lot of people are like that. I know for a fact. có nhiều người mượn nợ để mua đồ luôn á. A lot of people they just、uh, keep on、uh, taking loans just to buy new shiny things they don't ever need just because they like it. You know, is it、yeah. important to save money then? Yes, absolutely.、Um, saving money is one of the most、uh, highly recommended thing. You know, things like,、um, for example, if we have to go to the hospital for some illness. We have we need to have money, and if we have a family, whenever a family member become ill or suffer from any disease,、uh, we have to we need to have money to buy medicine to、uh, to help them, and also we have to save money to cater for the whole family, for, especially for,、yeah. to to cater for the whole family. For example. If there's a pandemic outbreak, for example, you know, like、uh, the COVID nineteen, you know,、uh, people have to stay at home. If so, if they don't don't have、um, saving, they have、uh, save money, they would be in trouble. You know, they have to stay at home the whole month. So they need to have money to buy food, to buy things they、um, that suits their needs. But if they do not、uh, save money,、uh, do not have saving money, I think they would、uh, be in trouble and they can gonna die will die soon. You know, don't have enough money, drinks and medicines, they would die really quickly. It's very important to save money for the rainy days. You know. Yeah. To save up the for、days. the rainy days. tiết kiệm cho những cái ngày mà xấu ngày xấu ngày ngày xấu trời ừ, còn có cái mà xài to save up for the rainy days you know tiết kiệm là lúc mà là thấp cơ lỡ vận tức là mấy cái lúc mà、uh, bị、uh, drama bị này bị kia ừ nó còn có cá cái mà xài so it's very important to save money I'm talking because I'm a cancer of course <cười> I save up of course yes what、But、you are cancer I'm a cancer so basically I save up a lot And it always seemed like my house always full of food, and pets, and things that will、uh, be able to,、uh, you know, help me survive like a pandemic or a flood or any natural disaster or something like that. You know. Oh. Well, oh. saving, saving money, saving food, and things like that. It's it's very normal thing for a cancerian to do. Người cung cử giả thường làm vậy mà. Tiết kiệm tiền, tiết kiệm mọi、okay. thứ. Well, but of course it doesn't mean that Cancerian are stingy, okay? If they have to spend, they ha- they will spend well, you know. 
nếu phải chi là chi mạnh tay thôi oh. ok do people usually buy things they don't need yes absolutely you know uh, nowadays advertisement are advertisement are really common and they motivate and they fascinate people to buy the thing that um, are really interesting and exciting you know so many people they buy the thing that they want that the, they buy the thing that are being advertised on the tv or or on some social media sites so basically those are the things that they want it's not the thing that they need so they waste their money a lot on the things that they don't need It's just waste their money on something that is cute or something that is trendy, you know. For example, mm -hmm. um, you can see that in uh, modern, there are some trends like uh, by the light, the lightsaber, you know. Lightsaber. Uh, last wow, summer. that's fun, but yeah. it's not going to be you. It's not going to be useful long. Yeah. So, uh, it was a thing that is quite trendy, but that is quite trendy, but. Uh, It's out of chance for in just about one month, and all the sellers who try to uh, cons to uh, store a lot to buy them, but to sell them, but in the end they cannot, you know, they cannot escape that. Is when it um, escape from uh, loan loans when it comes when the chain is over. Okay, you know. A lot of people these days, they just keep on spending and spending and spending. I have seen that trend of consumerism so often, you know, like their salary is only like say 10 million Vietnam dong per month, but they have the latest iPhone, they have the most expensive motorbike, something like that. And where the money comes from? They borrow money from the other people, you know? Yeah to buy things they don't even actually need that much some people they yeah. have they just think that owning the latest iphone or uh, something like that is a mark is basically a mark of their social status you know nó là một cái yeah. dấu hiệu của cái địa vị xã hội của họ it increase or improve their social status Well, that's why a lot of business owners, they go by car, you know, not a motorbike, you know, because yes. if you have, if you want to show people that you have social, social status, it's better, it's easier for you to do business with them, you know. So I do understand why people do that. But then if you are just a, a worker, an employee, and you spend or you overspend, more than your um, bread and butter, more than your ability to afford it, then that is absurd, you know, it's absurd. Kinh quá, nó, nó không thể chịu được. It's absurd, you know. <clears throat> okay, yeah. so let's try another one. 79. Describe a person who impressed you most when you were in primary school. Miêu tả một người mà đã tạo ấn tượng bạn nhiều nhất khi bạn còn trong trường cấp 1. This is very specific, but I think it's hard. Okay. Well, I can uh, make this uh, first. Uh, you can make up this story. <laughs> no, I think I can link with uh, other topics. Like, um, yes, you can probably link with other topics. A famous person. Chỉ cần đổi nó lại, đổi nó ra một cái gì đó um, thành uh, primary school or just change with primary school, yeah. Who he yeah. or she is, how you knew him or her, why he or she impressed you most Tại sao người này lại ấn tượng mình nhiều nhất à, Lại gây ra ấn tượng cho mình nhiều nhất Cái người nổi tiếng mà phải không? Impress you most, cái người này gây ra ấn tượng với mình nhiều nhất How mm. you knew, how you feel about him or her And then part 3, why do people always miss their childhood? Tại sao con người ta luôn luôn nhớ cái tuổi ấu thơ của họ Wow. Are children happier than adults? Why? Trẻ nhỏ có hạnh phúc hơn người lớn hay không? Tại sao? Mấy cái câu này nó, nó triết lý lắm luôn á. These are very philosophical and about life, something like that, you know. Why do people yeah. still remember many of their friends from primary school? Tại sao nhiều người vẫn nhớ nhiều bạn của họ trên trường cấp 1? Tại vì chơi thật với nhau, không có uh, lên cấp 2, cấp 3 như bài chính trường, chuyến trường rồi đó. 
I mean, for me, in uh, secondary like school it. and high school, it's like like a war zone, you know. A lot of people they are not really your friend, you know. But in primary school, you knew about them and they knew about your weaknesses and strength. Everything it's like you do not really uh, have to keep face with them. Không không có phải mà mua mặt, không có phải mà giữ mặt với họ. Giữ thể diện, không cần phải giữ thể diện tụi nó, tụi nó biết hết rồi. Mình cũng biết tụi nó, nó cũng biết tụi mình. Không cần phải giữ thể diện với nhau. There's no need to keep face with them when you have friends from uh, primary school or something like that. But when it comes yeah. to post-secondary school or high school, things happen. Things are different. You know, mọi thứ nó chuyện nó, nó sẽ khác biệt lắm khi mà có tuổi dậy thì rồi đủ thứ. And okay, last one. What kinds of primary school teachers impress students? Uh, kiểu uh, giáo viên cấp 1 nào gây ấn tượng với uh, học sinh? Giáo viên chịu chơi giống thầy chơi nha hả? <cười> like teachers who, are, who, who acts in a very confident manner And they yeah. have their own style They have their own style Cái phong cách riêng Đó là cái chữ cool đó, ừ, cool ngầu đó They have their own style And they are confident Of course those people are often, you said cool But don't use the word cool in IELTS, ok? Yes <cười> Ok Now you have some time to think about this one. Describe a person who impressed you most when you were in primary school. Okay. Well, I'm going to describe Cristiano Ronaldo, one of the most uh, decorated athletes in the world. And I was impressed by his goal-scoring prowess. You know, I am uh, I'm I'm big on football, so. I play yeah, I'm very tall. What? I'm very tall. What? I'm big on football. Okay. I play. Okay. I and I play football nearly every day. So, um, so, uh, it's obvious. It obvious. It's obvious that uh, I love famous football players, and Ronaldo has become a a fear of hard work. You know. Mm-hmm. So, um, the story of him is that um. Uh, On his move to uh, Manchester United in 2003, at that time he was just a talented player. But mm-hmm. after moving to uh, this uh, football club, he he trained so hard. He uh, developed his talent into a world class player. So uh, he's, uh, he inspired me about about the fact that if I work hard. If I try, if I uh, train hard to learn hard, I would become uh, I would become really successful. You know, uh, like just like Ronaldo, he has become a sensation uh, around the world for uh-huh. uh, his hard work, and the, he has uh, delivered a message to all people around the world that hard work would bring success. Uh, it's not just about luck, you know. Like uh, Lionel Messi, he has uh, uh, one of the best talent in the history of football. He's also really, he's also really successful, you know. But um, I think, uh, but I think he trained a lot. Uh, talent need to be developed. So they have uh, impressed me that uh, I should work hard. I should train hard to and not look at the lucky moment of other people so um this uh, these people and especially ronaldo that he impressed me a lot about hardworking uh, qualities about what hardworking qualities okay oh so it's because they're hardworking that he impressed you a lot really and they uh both scoring right? prowess say that say yeah, that Uh, I said at the first time, at the first time, uh, I uh, admire his uh, goal-scoring prowess. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Why do you? Why do people always miss their childhood? Then is it because life after childhood becomes more difficult? You think? Yeah. Well, I think they miss their childhood. That is because they miss the time that they 
they don't they didn't have to take so much responsibility of some everything and they do not have to care about so many problems and so many issues in their life and then uh, when they become mature they have a lot of pressure you know but when it comes to children they don't have to they don't have to um care for care for they don't have to care about so much of issues in their life mm-hmm. they don't have to worry so basically they are one of the most uh, happy happy people in the world okay so, they, well, they just the happiest the, one of the happiest happiest one of the happier happiest people in the world so basically they just miss the time that they were happy not uh, about these days where they are they are put under pressure and they have to meet the deadline so um yes i think that that's because you know, that's uh, why they miss their childhood a lot <clears throat> yes okay so are children happier than adults why yes yes absolutely um children are under protection of some adults and they don't have to uh, care about uh, problems like the financial burden or something like uh what we're gonna eat and what we are going to eat tonight so they just uh, let those things come and they can and they would enjoy and when it comes to entertainment or working you know children they don't have to work they just uh go have to go to school although school work sometimes may be uh pressure may be really tense and uh stressful but um i think most of the most of the time they the children would feel really comfortable when they can go to school and they can meet their friends and chat with them to socialize and entertain them so i think that uh, children are pretty much happier than adults uh-huh. when it because when it comes to adults they have to worry about everything you know like financial financial situation or they work in they work uh, have to care about their work and parents have to care about uh, their children how to uh, raise the, their children well so basically adults are less happy than children okay and also i don't think adults have to study all the way from seven o'clock in the morning all the way to nine o'clock <laughs> yeah i'm not so sure because it depends on situation you know Sometimes adults can be a bit more free than children these days, don't you think? Yeah, many students nowadays they have to they have to study from seven a.m. until maybe one a.m. Just because they have so much school, you know. They just uh, have about uh, more. Than, they just have about two two hours uh, sleeping at, at noon at, at midday and then uh, about uh, one or two one or two uh, hours free in the, in the evening and then they get back to work they study until uh, late until late night and then they can have um, a short uh, sleep until they have to get up and then com- just complete the circle again Okay, I see. Why do people still remember many of their friends from primary school? I think because they have uh, the friends in our, in their childhood have carved in their mind about uh, uh, some you know memorable experience in their childhood when they play with with each other. It's so free; they don't care about whether. Uh, this uh, whether this friend is uh, rich or not, they just care about whether they can enjoy each other, whether they can uh, play with each other well, or do everything with their 
with the guy friend and so especially in the in the in the pro in the period when they were at the primary school they don't care about uh, benefits when they play with each other so those are the times that you know, friends are really important and friends are their world you know Okay, friends are their world all the way in um, when you were in schools, but when you reach um, college, friends are friends are less and less becoming less and less more important, I think. But when yes. you start working, it's harder to find friends, you know, because it's like most of your friends are busy, or either they work in other places, so it's harder and harder. It's like Um, the older you are, the harder it is to find friends. Yeah. Okay. So, what mm -hmm. kind of primary school teachers impress students? Hmm. I think those teachers are uh, the people who uh, who have their own style and they are confident and. In front of the class, and the most important thing that they had to be humorous, you know, because uh -huh. children they love to I'm smile. I'm not so sure if I'm humorous and sarcastic enough. <laughs> mm. Well, I think uh, they, uh, you have uh, many jokes, so uh, it's gonna be uh, say it's gonna be say what? that you I are humorous. What? Say again. I have many what? Jokes. Jokes. You oh, I see. Jokes. So sometimes it's uh, really funny. Of course, it's really funny. I know it. <laughs> so, so um, the most important thing that this teacher has to be humorous, because mm -hmm. um, children they love to enter, they love to entertain. So, basically, they just uh, love the thing that makes them smile, and that makes them feel relaxed. And I have, I, I was still impressed about one of the teachers in my primary school. That he was really humorous. He uh, jokes uh, all the time, and he just uh, making the whole class laugh all the all the lesson, and then he go to another class. But uh, normally he he taught he teach uh, music, so there's nothing much to to teach your children. So basically, he just uh, come to my class, jokes about something, and then. Until the end of the class, so um, they are they impress the children, the children a lot. Okay, <clears throat> I see. All right, that's seventy nine. Wait a minute, oh, it's run running. Now. That's it's running out of time. No. Do you have any advice for for me? Any advice? No, because you already good. I think uh, you don't need any ha any more advice. Trust me. <clears throat> Just be confident. But I'm sure you, Leo, have a lot of them already. So <laughs> you, Leo, okay. have a lot of confidence already. So I don't think I need to tell you to be confident. <laughs> What am I thinking? Okay. What am I thinking? You guys are Leo. Okay. So let's try eighty-four. Describe a place you visited on vacation and would like to recommend to others. m i ê u tới một nơi bạn bạn đã viếng thăm trong một kỳ nghỉ và mong muốn là đề xuất với người khác hoặc là muốn giới thiệu người khác. Where is where you went there? When you went there? What you did there? Explain why you would like to recommend it to others. And then part three about um, vacation. What are some popular attractions that people like to visit in your country? Cái chỗ mà cuốn hút mà thông thường nhất mà con người ta thích viếng thăm đất nước bạn là chỗ nào? Like for example, I think maybe of course Đà Lạt, of course uh, <coughs> Hạ Long Bay, uh, Đà Nẵng or Huế, uh, Imperial Palace or um, yes. Nha Trang Beach and Vũng Tàu beaches, you know, something like that. Very popular attractions, and okay. you should uh, you should also talk about like why they are popular, and what are the problems with those places, or good thing about those places, bad thing about places, 
And then do old people and young people choose different places to go on vacation and why? Những người già và người trẻ có chọn những cái nơi khác nhau để đi nghỉ mát không? Tại sao? And what do young people and old people think about when making travel plans? Người trẻ và người già nghĩ gì, nghĩ về cái gì khi mà họ ra các kế hoạch mà đi lại? Kế hoạch đi lại, đi du lịch chẳng hạn. Like for example, young people often think about checking out places, uh, taking pictures, uh, you know, and then uh, posting on social media and something like that. And uh, they care about like homestay these days, you know. Cái phong trào homestay là bây giờ yeah. nặng lắm á. Phong trào homestay bây giờ nó mạnh lắm á. <cười> And then old people, they often think about where they uh, where's the most comfortable and then the price, you know. Người già nghĩ về giá thành rất là nhiều luôn á. And, and then to, uh, where they can relax more. Có gọi đầu dưỡng sinh không? <laughs> Is there a place where they can relax more and enjoy more, you know. And also yeah. they think about uh, all the popular places. Họ luôn đến cái chỗ rất là popular mà. Mà từ trước đến giờ. Young people they are more likely to choose like exotic places, you know. Thường có xu hướng chọn những cái chỗ mà nó lạ thường hơn với người trẻ. And the way they travel there is also different. Like, you know, young people they they can choose to travel by motorbike more, you know. Or by okay. car, but old people they often travel by by, by uh, maybe by car by, by bus or together with a lot of other people, you know. Đi theo đoàn. Yeah. Yes. Okay, well, so you well. think about all those factors. And then how do people find out about a new place? Sao con người ta tìm ra được về một cái nơi mới vậy? Like through the internet, through friends, uh, referral, through uh, word of mouth, you know? Truyền miệng. Truyền miệng nhau. Like through word of mouth or something like that. Um, yeah. Okay. Describe a place you visited on vacation and you would like to recommend to others. Okay. Yes, well, um, uh, now I I will now I will uh, now I'm gonna describe uh, Halong Bay, um, one of the most you know famous uh, places of uh, traveling. Uh, tourist destination in Vietnam, and it is situated in Quang Ninh province, province. Uh, which is province. 400 province, which is 400 kilometers away from my hometown. And you know, traveling to this place, uh, we can enjoy the scenic view of the majestic islands and also the emerald water. And uh, Basically, it's, it's, just, it's just a bay, so there's no waves there. So people can enjoy can enjoy the beach without uh, uh, without worrying that uh, there would be some large waves. And then, you know, they can enjoy the experience of um, swimming there. And also, and besides, they can explore the attractive cave, caves. Uh, for example, the Kim Kung Cave or the Dao Go Cave, especially in the Kim Kung Cave. When when I visited there, it was like a you know, it was like a, a majestic cave that uh, I felt like um, it was a hidden kingdom there, and there are many uh, rocks in there that um, it, that no, uh, it looks like um. A, a groom and a bride, and uh, the tourist guy uh, told me that uh, this is um, this is a, um, a wedding on the heaven, you know, because uh, the name of it is uh, Tian Kung Cave, and and you know, Halong is also famous for its delicious cuisine, especially the seafood, uh, you know, the crab and the shrimps and the squids, and oh, and besides. We can uh, travel uh, to uh, Sun World. We can play at the Sun World amusement park, and it is consisted of it is it consists of uh, two major parks. That is uh, the Dragon Park and 
the water park, especially the Dragon Park where I I uh, tried the roller coaster there, and um, it was quite fascinating that I that I can uh, uh, sit on just sit in the front of um, the roller coaster and uh, travel one minute experience of it. It's uh, quite an intimidating experience that uh, my heart was about to jump was about to jump out of my chest and i was uh, really scared at that time and so those are the experience that i love to share with each other with other people uh -huh. so i recommend that i highly recommend that people should travel to Hanoi bay on vacation Hmm, I see. So, what are some popular attractions that people would like to visit in your country? Um, yeah, well, I think there are many uh, tourist attractions. For example, Da Lat, or Halong Bay, or maybe, uh, hmm, what can I see, the Landmark 81, one of the most uh, one of the most famous uh, skyscrapers in Vietnam. And uh, also people can visit the Nha Trang Beach or Vung Tau Beach. Those are really uh, beautiful beach, beaches in Vietnam. And also people can uh, um, travel to some historic, uh, um, historic um, uh, places like uh, the Ku Chi, Gucci Channel. Uh, Gucci, uh, yeah, um, Gucci what's it called? Tunnel. Tunnel. Gucci, Gucci Tunnel. Gucci Tunnel. Gucci Tunnel. Uh, it's very famous mainstream. in Vietnam. It's a very mainstream place, you know. Yeah. It, uh, really, it, is, it is a really famous uh, famous place uh, during the uh, Vietnam War. You know, like the, the American says, it's a, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a place where the the Vietnamese uh, shoulders hide when there's when the planes are bombing uh, uh, bombing uh, bombing on their head. So those are the places that I would recommend when would recommend to other people in my country. <clears throat> okay, good. Right. So, do old people and young people choose different places to go on vacation, and why? Hmm. Yes, I, I, I think so. Because uh, when it comes to uh, young people, they love to seek, they love to seek um, interesting experience, like uh, go to some amusement park, or they go on some adventure, you know, and try different kinds of uh, entertainment and recreational activity. But when it comes to old people, they love to travel to some places that are peaceful, that are peaceful, you know, and it must also be quiet, like um, travel to some pagoda or uh, go hiking or, or climbing on the mountain, like uh, climbing mountain, for example. So those are the, the the activities that help them to relax and entertain the peacefulness of life. So I think young, young people and old people have pretty much pretty different uh, hobbies. And uh, so I think they would cho choose different places to go on vacation. Mm -hmm. Well, what do young people and old people think about when making travel plans then? What's the differences? Hmm. I think uh, young people care more about the places that they can go to uh, entertain, like uh, rec recreational activities, for example, maybe. And they care about the experience they can uh, play. But when it comes to old people, they care about the experience they can get uh, uh, in to relax in that in that place, you know, like uh, whether the hotel is uh, have good service or not, or whether the homestay is uh, convenient or comfortable or not. 
and so I think they um, old people they care much about uh, relaxing activity uh-huh. but when it comes to uh, and to young people they care more about recreational activity so yeah I think they have different plans okay All right. Last question: How do people find out about a new place then? Wow. <clears throat> well, um, with the development of technology nowadays, people have a lot of uh, means to a lot uh, of what? A lot of a lot of means, means of uh, update. Cut, no, means to not memes. means. Of... <laughs> not memes. <laughs> yeah, people have a lot of means to update news. Uh, They can get news about one a new place uh, from social networking sites like uh, Facebook or TikTok or um, YouTube, maybe. And they can also get news from some travel agency, like you know, on some website. You know, if we want to travel to some places uh, and um, access some travel agency site, they would recommend a lot of places for uh, traveling. And we, we can also know the price of the travel, you know, and I can, we can also, uh, you know, watch TV, uh, see some advertisement or some uh, documentary about some uh, places of, of, of traveling. And so those are the, are the means of uh, um, ways to, those are the ways to uh, know about new places that I can think about. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> okay. Let this one be the end then. I don't think there's gonna be a problem if we end a bit earlier, now. Yeah. Well, I think so. Okay. That's the end of my videos. Please like, share this video with your friends, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and press on the bell button next to the subscribe button so you can get notified about my new uploads. Okay. You can also follow, press follow my Facebook, but please don't add me on Facebook as friends, okay? Cảm ơn các bạn đã theo dõi nha. Các bạn hãy nhấn vào like, chia sẻ video này bạn bè các bạn. Nhấn vào nút đăng ký kênh YouTube mình và nút cái chuông kế bên cạnh để đăng ký kênh đó, để mà các bạn có thể được thông báo về những video mới nha. Các bạn cũng có thể nhấn vào nút theo dõi Facebook mình nhưng nhớ đừng kết bạn Facebook mình nha. Thank you and see you. Bye.